Okay, well, here we are, folks. It's the latest and greatest. I'm probably going to throw three videos up today. The two others will be kind of like just news briefs of what's going on. And then you can always go to my Beano reports. I've showed you how to go there. You can. Anybody got any news links? And then sorry about the audio there because the idea that I just, you know, hurry up and record. So there's all the info for what you need to know about the next eclipse that we got coming around. And so if you got any news links, just uh, send them to me. Everybody can report the news, so send them to me and we'll get them on there and we'll have all the news in the world on Beano Reports. So as far as space today, the sun's been real calm, so I'll be taking a look for the, like the last month or so or anything recent. You've got to remember Centauri B and A. Okay? And it, it's only four point something light years away, and I'll get to that here in a second. We'll zoom in on it here as much as we can. And I think I already got that one set up as as close in as we can get it and everything like that and there's basically a map and the deal with my uh, comments you know the comments have started to reappear on my videos so will factual actual and then people have ways of sending messages video games and so forth this is old archives there pretty much all this stuff's pretty old uh, Fuji and Malin I think uh, these are actual that's a telescope shot though actual fact this here is just basically someone sending a message on a any name player. Try not to use names. There is an airplane and then an artist rendition to cover it up that somebody's up in an airplane actually looking at what celestial is going on. Because that's factually uh, Rigel's and uh, I'll basically go here to it in a few. Uh, appreciate this guy's deal. Uh, I got artistical rights, the idea that if you got anything on the internet you can go ahead and get it. Uh, I always have pictures enough where it's always going to be fact information that I'm giving you if there's a picture and so forth and stuff. So we got this shot here of Rigel and then we can go into this here blow up of it. So it's actually out there and it's only four point something light years away. We'll get down to that info in a, in a little bit. Keep going through the shots here. So this guy calls his place a Sword of Orions, and I'm just going to keep it that way. And you can basically you, you can put that in, and you'll find it on just about any search you do. And then he's got a very good uh, that you can go ahead and click to. And I'll probably maybe try to put a link to this guy's link into my data because basically you'll have a lot of pictures, uh, even other stuff as he notes there. And then we'll go up through this, and you can read it. I'm not going to blab off everything. You can read the screen and freeze it. He goes through what he's been collecting over the actual telescope telescope shots ladies and gentlemen so that's that guy's deal out there on the internet he had that good shot there of Rigel there trying to get over to Antares here real fast there you go sizes and so forth there's a shot of the night sky looks like it's out of probably New Mexico or Arizona uh, I picked up a 35 millimeter camera the other day and realize how much that we're off in and out. This is how you can get faked out, ladies and gentlemen. Those are bulbs, and then you know what you know. I'm going to be telling you that. But you can look up the model of a Dorsey, and these they make good products. Don't get faked out by fake moons and so forth in the night or images. Someone trying to make themselves out to be a UFO, abduct you or whatever. Because factual that they do a very big, bright as we'll show you right here, I'm faking you out. So somebody can sit there and say, there's a spacecraft up in there, and boom, boom, you see. So stick the actual fact, ladies and gentlemen, what, what, what's going on in the world. That there's a picture they don't want you to see too much. That's not our sun. That is the sun of Alpha Centauri A and so forth. And if you listen to my audio through this, remember, don't get faked out. There's a chart of a lot of the planets up, and I think I can go down a little bit and you should be able to read off that address you can freeze the screen always try to watch on full screen it makes it a lot better for you that's basically how a planet gets made gases in space explode uh, radioactive this is actually put down as a smart ass link name but factual uh, Hubble captures a collision of gases near dying star okay dying star but dying stars explodes explodes the gases near it and creates a new planet theorist correct 
Professional theorist, correct. Pretty much dead on, correct. Because a lot of physicists are paying attention to what Einstein theorized a long time ago and looked at and said, spooky. It's not spooky. It's basically how everything gets recreated. I.e., you have sexual relations with a female, and then she explodes in her belly, and you got another kid. So there's there's Earth, a new, a new planet someday, ladies and gentlemen. And basically, you know, planetoids, and basically, uh, we'll get down to what that is. Basically, what Rigel, and then you got Rigel A and B, which are closer. And I'll keep going through with pictures here. That's somewhat of an artist rendition there. No advertising, it's just that stuck on there from going to the page that the guy added on. Now, if you pay attention to this, I think I've got it blown up as much as you can get. And there we go. You'll get an idea of Bategulus, which is Beetlejuice, which is Rigel, A and B, but basically Bategulus, which people pronounce Beetlejuice, which is a bunch of BS, or just trying to do this cinematography for Hollywood and stuff like that to hide. It's right there in front of that sun, not our sun. Okay, and yeah, there is actually a sun that is that huge out there. And that's pretty much its relation. That's a mirrored image of it because that's B there. There are huge suns out there that are huge. Remember I told you, and there is a new object that's a thousand times bigger than the sun out there, ladies and gentlemen. It's a dwarf, we believe. Uh, 747 that number and also a 727 and stuff they use objects and that's why certain companies have named airplanes that are huge that and there's some links here that you can pay attention to and go I'll just gonna keep scrolling up through this basically those are artists renditions of actual space photos that will get get you a little bit more of an actual fact on that as we continue through our photos of telescopes which basically this is a great one here like I say not wanting to advertise for anybody okay I'm just stuck with that because they do that and I got stuck with you you get stuck with on when you my videos because my my uh, this is all Rigel now basically those are two other planetoid objects that are up there as you can see That's a dying star, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Double photo of it. And I think I'll have a shot. I don't have it combined up on here right now, but I'll have a shot of what the Rabbit Rover took a ultraviolet and it's in green shade of the sun which is a great shot but basically NASA has done some shots of that like that too and I'm gonna tell you because it's delivered you know how it's delivered and basically you can freeze the screen on all that information most of the time get as many of these shots in, and you can always freeze the screen watch full screen and then you can read it and then I can just make these videos real fast so basically that's a great shot there so as you see the sunlight hits that planet now that is basically a before B and C. See, B and C are the smaller objects. And B is bigger than Earth, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? B is way bigger than Earth. Uh, you'll see in a, a few minutes here that A is barely outside the hot zone. And as this is B, A is closer in and smaller, but it's in the right on the edge of the hot zone. Might possibly be habitable. Now remember, this is an artist rendition, then there's other planets here, other objects. And if you back up the video to the one I was showing you with that all in, I think I'll have another one here. Now, these are pretty much relations with orbits and not actual positions, okay? And this is all the huge star of Rigel, and then A and B, and they're cooled off, and then the other objects that are huge, what everybody always calls a black or brown dwarf. That's not Earth. That's Orion. That's an artist's rendition over a satellite shot, okay? They paint it in of what they actually see, not trying to brainwash people. There's Rigel. One of it, it's like Rigel. That's not really Rigel, A or B. That there is like a moon of Rigel, okay? This is another shot zoomed in on Rigel, and then basically that is probably A right down there. 
Rigel's pretty much in a position like uh, a little farther out. We hope it's cooler than uh, than what? Trying to match it up with our star, the one that we pay attention to the most, the one that we believe is the only one that shines on Earth every day. The factual that uh, Venus is the approximate size on that. Now, as we're looking at Rigel here, okay, and then they have the stars going off in a row, which basically, it's just like looking through a microscope pretty much because the idea that it's DNA, uh, all those stars are in ropes out there. And basically, the Rigel area and everything like that is an intertwine because we're going to get to where I can go down through Orion and stuff like that here and show you in a little bit. I'm going to back up to that one shot because factual, Pataglius, which is the star, the sun, and tears, and then you got Rigel, but basically you got A and B, which I don't really show you there. I hope I didn't. So I'll cue this back up, and basically you'll get where they got the name pretty much. Well, Beretta is a name, but the idea there's also a planet out that's called, called Beretta that's in this system. Uh, it basically is a huge moonish to earth type planet as you can see the colorization and everything like that and you got the orange which is the hot zone so as I go in on this you should be able to fact see and as you pay attention to that note that they have there and I'll bring you down to that go in as much as I can and then we're in as much as we can and there's your note now we go over and we'll see this is all the orbits here it's a dang good map of the orbits Okay, and then we'll go up to the side. See, it's barely on the hot zone. I.e., with what we know, what they're going to start doing, and we're going to, the scientists, a, a, an astronaut can get out of a spacecraft like Discovery or any of the any of the spaceships that we put up there, and basically, astronaut gets out and does a walk. They can pick up a satellite, ladies and gentlemen. So, a tugboat spaceship can go lasso a asteroid. And we actually could probably take that planet and get it right outside the hot zone. Science and physicists know it can be done. Will it be done? Eventually it will be done. This is only four point something light years away, ladies and gentlemen. Remember your distances to Mars. I'll see if I can put that in real fast. Now this whole orbit is 800 light years in width at least and possibly larger, okay? And you can freeze the screen on that, and I'll just try to blow up a little bit and pop down really fast. And those are the two suns that are in line there. Proximity Centauri hip, and then basically you got A and B and Alpha Centauri 1. Actual telescope, Scott, and that's not the Earth. That is actually Rigel B, okay? And that's just like if you were looking out in space at the sun and Earth. That's that Rigel B's sun right there. I.e., these are all telescope shots just like satellite. Satellite's a telescope. Now remember Orion. The size of that sun, and then that's that hot planet. They will be able to tow that. Human beings will someday tow that planet out of that hot zone. Remember, artists over satellite shots, ladies and gentlemen. Even the moons up there would be habitable. Only 4.7 light years away. Yes, folks, fake see planets because on the other side of there, there's light hitting it from the suns. Rigel's very real. Remember, folks, Rigel is very real. And remember infinity because space is infinite. Okay? And... Remember the name, they put their deviantry, I think there's whatever, I can't get it in the whole deal, but the fact is, it's satellite shots, conglomerated together, and then they put the artistry work to it. That's basically that star up there, and then all of those, yep. So basically something happened a long time ago, and all these stars that are in a line like DNA, they died out. You see? Just like Earth, it died out. Satellite telemetry with artistry. Tons of stuff in fo space, folks, and there's some Hubble stuff. Butterfly galaxies, basically. So basically, stars and planets becoming planets and being born. Stuff going on all the time. Space is infinite. I don't know if this is a telescope from land or factual. If this is from the moon and one of the rovers or something like that, I'm not sure. But those are a rival out there. Planetoid objects, as you can see. Kids in the space industry, get them in the military. Rigel and a companion star there. Star, the actual suns. Okay, evidence that basically Bino needs to help people communicate from Earth. More next.